Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Out of the Park Baseball 24 playthrough of the Cincinnati Reds. And our first season as general manager of the Reds is complete. It was ultimately a reasonably successful season for Cincinnati. Uh, record was 77 and 85, so that was a 15 game improvement on the 62 and 100 record that the Reds had in 2022 and was close-ish to 500 ball. Unfortunately, we lost our last four games of the season when we still had a chance to be even closer to 500 or potentially even 500 if we had won those last four games. We also had a uh, key goal with ownership to increase fan interest, which we did boost by 33 points over the course of the season. So I think we made progress on both of those fronts, not complete success, but we're in the neighborhood of being successful. And we'll find out what Robert Castellini really thinks of it in a few weeks when the postseason is over. But now we're heading into the off season, And quite honestly, for someone who plays like I do as GM only, this is when things really get interesting. The first four episodes of this series uh, were playing through the season but we got dropped in as general manager of the Reds two days before the season started. So we really were able to do nothing prior to the season in terms of reshaping it in our own interest. And given budgetary constraints, uh, we tried to make a lot of trades during the season. Definitely got younger. Definitely brought on some young talent that we hopefully will try to build around. And we've also continued to develop our farm system really like the draft that we had a couple of months ago in game time. We rank fifth overall uh, in terms of our minor league system with five of the top 55 prospects in baseball. Ellie De La Cruz, who will probably be up next year. Edwin Arroyo, a shortstop who's not too, too far away, could be up at the end of next season. And then further away is the 17-year-old catcher, Alfredo Duno and third baseman Sal Stewart and Cam Collier. Uh, Collier may be a bit closer than Stewart at this point, um, simply because he was healthier throughout this season and played 125 games. But uh, we don't have tons of immediate help uh, for the major league level coming from our minor league system yet. So before we get into planning for next season let's take a look back at how this season went as i mentioned a 77 and 85 record uh, which was five games below our pythagorean expectations we were expected to actually have a slightly winning record but a poor record in extra inning and one run games uh, didn't help us in terms of getting to 500 you can see we were a consistently mediocre team uh, we won between 11 and 15 games every month of the season, uh, but we lost between 12 and 15 games every month of the season. So that basically adds up to a team that's uh, close to 500, but not quite there. We did end up second in the National League in runs scored, and you can see we were generally in the top half of the league in just about all of the batting categories. Uh, pitching is the clear area that we need to improve. We were 12th in runs allowed, and you can see we were in the bottom third of the league in just about every pitching category except for strikeouts, and our defense was not particularly good either. So the good news as we head into our first offseason as the general manager of the Reds is that there is Hopefully a lot of uh, relatively easy areas to improve as we begin building this team in our own image. And as we take a look at our pitching staff, uh, we've got a lot of work to do, and we knew that. Uh, Nick Lodolo definitely looks like someone we can build around, the only uh, lefty in our starting rotation. Don't love the lack of movement on his pitches, uh, particularly in a home run uh, friendly park like Great American. Somehow he did only give up nine home runs this year and 179 and a third innings pitched. I uh, would expect that to revert um, 
to a higher level. You can see a year ago he gave up four more home runs despite pitching 76 fewer innings. Uh, led the National League in FIP minus, led the National League in war with that 11-7 and record and 276 ERA. The 25-year-old is likely to get a few uh, Cy Young votes. Uh, probably not going to win the award, but had a really nice season. We brought Clark Schmidt over from the Yankees in a trade. He's got potential to be back in the rotation next year, but at 7-6 and six with a 5.38 ERA, certainly was not overly impressive this season. Uh, Graham Ashcraft, in contrast, uh, was a jack-of-all-trades for us this year. Pitched 49 games, including 16 starts, 10-6 and six record, 15 saves, 367 ERA, over 120 innings pitched. Um, only a little bit, uh, not even a full win above replacement, though. So we may have gotten a, a little bit lucky. You can see, although his ERA plus was uh, in positive territory, his FIP minus was in negative territory. His Sierra was almost a full run higher than his actual ERA. So we think there could definitely be some regression to the mean with him next year. And then Connor Overton is a guy who was uh, in and out of the rotation throughout the year. 6 and 11, 562 ERA, 30 years old. Uh, hopefully, we can move on from him in the offseason. Trevor Williams is a guy we picked up in a trade simply because he was somewhat popular. He was brutal with the Reds, uh, 1 and 5 record in 13 starts, 786 ERA and a 170 whip over 60 and two-thirds innings. Still have him signed next year with the Nats retaining the vast majority of his salary, uh, but would certainly hope with the likes of Overton and Williams that if they are on our team next year, they're on our team as a 12th or 13th pitcher, and they're a long reliever coming out of the bullpen rather than someone we're relying on in the rotation. And there is a likelihood that something like that could happen because when we do look at the injured list, uh, we've got Ian Anderson, young pitcher who we picked up in a trade very early in the playthrough. He was 6-8 and eight with a 467 ERA, out with an elbow strain now, but would certainly expect him back uh, before the regular season. Uh, so hopefully he'll be back. Unfortunately, Hunter Green, another good young pitcher, out for 11 months with a torn flexor tendon that he suffered late in the season. So uh, he is going to be very unlikely to give us anything next year. And then Vladimir Gutierrez, 28-year-old, uh, spent the entire season on the IL. He got hurt in March and uh, still is going to be fortunate if he's healthy for spring training. Doesn't really have a profile where I think he's going to be a big-time contributor. So definitely still have some work to do in terms of improving the rotation. And honestly, there's a lot of work to do to improve the bullpen as well. Uh, Ian Gibo, another guy that we picked up in a trade, uh, 537 ERA. Will Warren, a pitcher we picked up from the Yankees, 723 ERA. Uh, the 33-year-old Fernando Cruz was our most consistent reliever throughout the season. Uh, we kept him around despite his age simply because he is cheap and he was also pretty effective um, a year ago when he first kind of got his first crack of consistent time in the big leagues with the Reds, and then I was still one of our better relievers, probably our best reliever over the course of the season. So he will likely be back. The rest of these guys are pretty much interchangeable, and none of them had particularly great seasons. Joel Cunell, uh, Lucas Sims, Alexis Diaz, and Luke Weaver. I'm sure some of, some of those players will be back with us next year. Some of them won't be. Uh, Rever San Martin, uh, the only lefty out of our pen because of that and because we've only got one lefty in the rotation, would think that uh, his spot on the team is pretty secure next year. We probably want to add more lefties. And he was also one of our more effective uh, relievers. Has a pretty nice profile here, 27-year-old, still making the major league minimum. Led the league with 96 games pitched, 29 holds. Um, 99 strikeouts in 81 and two-thirds innings and a 1.4 war. So he was uh, very effective for us as a lefty out of the pen and uh, 
one of the few players on this pitching staff that we're definitely going to uh, put his name down in pen when we're thinking about what our 26-man roster uh, should look like next March. Turning to our everyday players, as I talked about, our offense was generally pretty respectable. Uh, some of that helps playing our games in Great American. Uh, some of it, though, is that we've got some decent talent, particularly young players. Uh, like our catching situation, we've got a team option next year on Kurt Casale. Uh, given the good personality, respectable defensive catcher, and the productivity this year, 258 average, four homers, and 151 at-bats, one win above replacement. I uh, think that we'll likely have him back, uh, backing up Tyler Stevenson, who's heading into his arbitration years, probably going to make around $4 million next year. Uh, another solid, not spectacular, but a solid defensive catcher. Hit 273 with nine homers this year, uh, pretty much a league average type player as far as his OPS plus and his WRC plus almost two wins above replacement. Uh, it's not a great catching duo, but it's not a bad catching duo. Certainly not uh, the biggest problem that we have on this team. Joey Vada, we've got a $20 million team option for the longtime Red. Uh, we are definitely going to be declining that option. Hit just a buck ninety-eight this year with 15 homers and 399 at bats. Uh, had a couple of stints on the IL. We love his perfect OOTP personality, green in all six categories, but he was a minus 1.3 war on the season. Uh, hopefully he'll just retire in the offseason after we decline his option. Don't really want to see Votto playing anywhere besides Cincinnati, uh, but just not a good baseball or economic decision to bring him back for next year. Picked up Oswaldo Cabrera in a trade with the Yankees. He mostly played second base for us this year, although he does have the versatility to become a super utility guy uh, sometime in the future for us, if that's the way his career emerges. But a 271 average, 24 doubles, 15 homers, above average in terms of his OPS plus and his WRC plus, a 2.5 war. Happy to have him back. Similarly, Jonathan India, who was playing second base before Cabrera came over, ended up DHing more often once that happened, was our all-star this year, ended up hitting 293 with 19 homers, well above average OPS plus and WRC plus and a two war. Uh, he will be back also, uh, going to be making around $4 million. So, um, you know, the fact that we do have players like Tyler Stevenson and Jonathan India who are getting out of their major league minimum years, even more of an incentive for us to move on from Mr. Vado and free up a little bit extra money to pay players like that. Christian Encarnacion, number 60 prospect in baseball, first base slash third baseman, hit 261 with 17 homers and 318 at-bats, obviously a big part of our future. Jason Vosler probably is not uh, 30 years old now, hit just 228 and 79 at-bats. Uh, he's still making the major league minimum. And uh, he does have the ability to play a number of positions, but it's going to be a uh, battle for him to make the 26-man roster next year. He does have option years left, um, but uh, at 30 years old, I'm sure he's hoping that he would be more established uh, as a major leaguer at this point. Kevin Newman, another guy who's already in his arbitration year, is set to make close to $5 million dollars. Had a nice year for us. Hit 292, close to league average in terms of his OPS plus and WRC plus, a war of almost two and a half. He's got a good personality in the clubhouse and is a respectable defensive shortstop. Would I prefer to have someone with more range, better error rating, more of a cannon for an arm? Yes, I would. But I'm playing as the Cincinnati Reds. I've got budgetary constraints. Um... I think for next year, unless there's a defensive wizard with a respectable bat who happens to be on the market looking for less than $10 million a year, I think we probably head into next year with uh, Kevin Newman as our shortstop again. And uh, we could certainly do better, but we could also certainly do much worse than him. 
turn into the outfielders where we've got a ton of depth right now. Uh, the, probably the best trade we made was picking up Jared Kelnick. Um, the Mariners had kind of moved on from him, and he was starting the year uh, in AAA, although he did end up spending some time in Seattle also. Uh, we ended up um, picking him up in a trade, and uh, after we scouted him, he looks much better than what we thought we had. You can see it was very low reliability, but even when we got to high reliability after we had already traded for him, um, he just kind of improved in just about everything. His contact, his power, his defensive ability uh, while he was in our minor league system for most of this year and had a huge year in AAA, 318, 33 homers. We brought him up for good in the month of September, 279 with six homers on the year. Uh, while he was down in AAA, we got him to trained up so he can play first base if we need him as a potential replacement for Votto. Uh, good personality and certainly looks like he could be a plus bat with decent speed. So uh, he is one of the players we're going to be building around. Picked up both Andrew McCutcheon and Charlie Blackman in trades before the trade deadline just as we were trying to boost fan interest by bringing on some popular veterans. Uh, don't think either of those players will be back. Jake Fraley will be in the mix for a roster spot next year, split the year between Cincy and Louisville, hit 261 at the major league level, uh, was respectable. He can play all three outfield positions with decent proficiency. Uh, definitely has a chance to stick as a fourth or fifth outfielder next year. TJ Friedel going to be in the uh, battle to play center field again. Ended up um, generally as our starting center fielder, 259 average, 28 doubles. Decent offense. Surprisingly, the war was only 0.6, despite the fact that he's got decent range and error rating. Um, definitely in the mix for a roster spot. Could we upgrade at center field? Possibly. Uh, but if we have to play him out there, not the end of the world. Will Benson, another young player who split time between Louisville and Cincinnati. 225 average, so he didn't really rake at the major league level, but he did have 14 homers and 18 doubles and 364 at-bats, another respectable defensive player, and we've also got him as an option for first base uh, next year as well in the post Votto era. And last but not least, uh, Alex Karloff, another outfielder that we traded for early in our tenure, hit 289 with 21 homers and 398 bats. Uh, was incredibly productive for us offensively. Looking at his batting profile, would probably not expect him to duplicate those kind of numbers, uh, but will certainly be in the mix for a corner outfield and or DH slot in the lineup next year. Uh, a couple of uh, players that were injured to mention, and I didn't mention uh, TJ Antone when I was talking about um, potential pitchers, but he was on a rehab assignment in... Louisville, um, coming off of some pretty significant injuries, he'll be competing for a back end of the uh, pitching staff spot next year. But getting back to the position players, uh, third baseman Spencer Steer ended up having a respectable year. 279, 13 homers, 27 doubles, 118 for his OPS plus and his WRC plus and a 2.4 war. Uh, he is absolutely going to be back in the mix to play somewhere in the infield. Um, third base is probably his most natural position, um, but could play second base. Um, I guess, you know, with that arm, he's, you know, kind of got the range that you'd want for a third baseman rather than the second baseman, but kind of more of the arm that you'd want at second rather than at third. And the turn double play rating, not optimal for second base either. But uh would think that he will be back in the mix for a spot in the starting lineup next year. Uh, but clearly with the likes of Encarnacion, Strand, Cabrera, uh, Kelnick, Kirilov, Benson, um, got a lot of players that we've uh, brought up this year who are going to be competing for kind of corner infield and corner outfield type spots next year, and Steer is likely in that mix also. 
So we are going to have a lot of roster decisions to make uh, this offseason, and there's plenty of areas that we're going to be able to hopefully improve this team when we've got some money to spend. So uh, now it's a matter of getting through the playoffs and uh, finding out uh, what our budget's going to look like. If we take a look at the playoff tree, the Rangers, the Blue Jays, the Dodgers, and the Braves secured the first round buys. Uh, looks like we got a big series between divisional rivals, the Yankees and the Red Sox in the American League. And uh, we've got a couple of division rivals in the wild card round in the National League with the Diamondbacks and the Padres and the Cubs and the Cardinals going up against it. Uh, the only wild card series that won't fe feature division rivals is going to be the Twins and the Rays in the American League. So four AL East teams in the playoffs this year led by the Blue Jays. Can uh, the AL East, which has four of the 12 teams in the playoffs, will uh, one of them be able to make it to the World Series and become a World Series champion? We'll find out shortly. And as we wait for the playoffs to finish up and the offseason to begin, uh, we do have the start of International Amateur Free Agency, which... Uh, the expanded international amateur free agency is something I'm really enjoying in OOTP24. I do agree with uh, frequent commenter Patrick DeBonis that the timing of it right in the middle of the playoffs for when it kicks off is a little awkward, especially if you're right in the middle of a serious playoff race uh, or a serious playoff series. Uh, the timing is a little awkward to all of a sudden pivot to looking at all of these international amateur free agents for the first time, but in the case of the Reds, we're not in the playoffs, so it gives us something to look forward to in a pretty impressive class this year, according to our scout at least. You can see that there's nine players with three and a half or higher star potential, and pretty interesting diversification as far as where they're from. A couple... Venezuelans, three Dominicans, but then also a Aussie, a Japanese player, a Panamanian, and Jorge Guerrero from the Dutch Antilles. And he is an incredibly interesting prospect. Uh, high loyalty, adaptability, and work ethic. Listed as a shortstop. I don't think he is a shortstop, um, but he's someone who with the bat that he has uh, and the height of 6'3", could certainly be a first baseman or a DH. But the real interesting thing about him, and if you were looking closely, you already noticed this, is that he also looks like he could be a darn good pitcher, potentially plus stuff, movement, and control with a fastball, curveball, and sinker in his arsenal, potentially enough stamina to be a five-plus inning type of starter. So I don't know that Jorge Guerrero is uh, the next Babe Ruth or Shohei Otane, but uh, certainly has potential to be a very interesting player as uh, a hitter and or a pitcher. And we do already have an average relationship with him, which is positive. Uh, supposedly he's not looking for a ton of money, but that can certainly change. But I uh, haven't looked through these top nine um, hitting prospects, particularly at this early stage where don't really know much of anything about anybody with all the low and very low scouting accuracies. I'm going to invite all nine of those players to our initial training camp. And then when we get to the pitchers, uh, there's one that stands out, Sergio Cascarino. Uh, definitely a decent personality. 16-year-old who's already throwing in the mid-90s. Uh, potentially a four-pitch arsenal. And... Uh, excellent control, potentially excellent stamina. Uh, typically, once I start learning more about the players, seeing who's not as good as we may think they are, and also who there's going to be tons of league interest in, who we're building relationships with, who we're not building relationships with. I may change the 10 players that I invite to camp, but typically right now, um, at the first camp in mid-October, I generally lean towards just bringing in the top 10 prospects and getting to know all of them pretty well. I will also set up uh, s assignments for scouting reports on all of the international amateurs now. 
uh, definitely takes some time to get all of these in with 122 players between the position players and the pitchers uh, being scouted now and the fact that these players are all over um, the world, primarily in North and South and Central America, but definitely all over the world. But uh, try to get our scouting accuracy by the time we need to start making decisions in January up to at least a average level, if not better, on as many of the players as possible. So we will move on to our camp, and you can see we've got in our view, the 10 best prospects in camp. Uh, scouting accuracy, not great. Got a few decent relationships at this point. We'll go ahead and we'll run that practice. And uh, you can see we built strong relationships with three players already, and we're average scouting accuracy on both Guerrero and Huerta. Uh, Guerrero still looking like a extremely interesting prospect as both a pitcher and a hitter. And uh, with the fact that we now know more about Huerta, don't love the personality there with the low work ethic and leadership particularly. Not a great defensive player, uh, but certainly with the potential to have 60 contact and 70 home run power with a plus I. Could certainly be somebody that we would be interested in down the line, but certainly uh, Guerrero is going to be someone very interesting for us to keep our eyes on over the next several months and uh, potentially keep trying to build that relationship and uh, bring the next Babe Ruth into the Cincinnati organization. And as we get ready for the World Series, it's going to be the Texas Rangers against the San Diego Padres. So having four American League East teams in the playoffs uh, did not end up mattering. Uh, there were three NL West teams between the Padres, the Diamondbacks, and the Dodgers in the playoffs, though. And uh, that division at least took advantage by getting uh, San Diego to the World Series, where they will be facing off against a... Uh, Texas team that has been dominant, taking out the Red Sox three to nothing, and then the Rays four games to one. Uh, San Diego, after that first round sweep of the Diamondbacks, has had a more challenging trip to the Fall Classic, beating the Braves in five and then taking out their division rival Dodgers in seven. And we talked earlier about the great season that Kelnick, who uh, looked like Seattle was giving up on, had for us in AAA before we brought him up to the majors. And he was just named the uh, International League uh, Most Valuable Player for 2023. So really looking forward to having Jared Kelnick as part of our lineup next season every day at the major league level. Think that uh, he will be able to more than replace the offense that... Um, Joey Votto gave us this year and uh, maybe over time will become a uh, similarly productive player to Votto during the uh, prime of his career. Tend to think that Kelnick's probably not going to hit for quite the same average that Joey Votto did at his best. Um, probably not walk quite as much, uh, but think he can still be a very productive offensive player for the Reds for the next several seasons. And as the offseason begins, uh, we do get some credit for an owner goal complete with that uh, excellent improvement that we made in staff cohesion. Uh, so that was possible. Average score on the year. Uh, quickly take a look at the World Series and uh, the Rangers with a dominant playoff one run. Uh, swept the Padres out in the World Series and they dropped only one game to the Rays throughout their run. So a uh, Absolutely impressive 11-1 playoff record for the Texas Rangers, who uh, built on that 95-win regular season that was the best in the American League and rampaged through the playoffs. You can see Aaron Judge uh, just missed on 62 uh, for a second straight year with 59 homers. Should be a pretty strong candidate again for AL MVP. And uh, Kyle Schwarber with 61 homers for the Phillies. Uh, that may be the clean National League record at this point. 
And we have made it to the off season. Uh, Joey Votto option year decision was needed, uh, but he also announced that he was going to retire. So no decision ultimately needed on Joey Votto. And we're not going to have a decision on our team option on Kurt Casale either because uh, he voided the last year of his contract and opted out to test free agency. The really bad news, though, is that our scouting director, R.J. Harrison, who we hired, retired uh, after one season with us. So after we spent this entire whole first season in Cincinnati scouting the entire universe, getting to know our team well, we are now back to a point where our scouting accuracy on everyone in our organization is mediocre at this point. Um, so that is definitely a bit frustrating and one of my um, hang-ups with the game, particularly with the fact that with um, Votto retiring, and it looks like uh, we got a $26 million boost to our budget, we're going to have close to $70 million to spend in free agency. And as I said, I'm someone who enjoys playing GM only, but now we are just a few weeks away from the beginning of free agency, and we've got to basically start over in terms of scouting the entire universe. So this is, um, you know, just one of those things with OOTP that I do find frustrating, obviously, managers and general managers and scouts and players are all going to retire but when a scout retires and it basically just completely decimates every piece of information that you have across all of baseball, uh, it seems a little bit unrealistic. It would make sense to me if there were some type of uh, six-month decay or something where it steadily went down from very high when the player re when the scout retired to high to average to low to very low or whatever the categories are if they just kind of deteriorated one level a month or something unless you rescouted in that time period that would make it a little more palatable to me but uh was really looking forward to this off season and I still am looking forward to this off season it's just that we are going to be further behind than I thought we would be because all of the scouting that we've focused on doing for the last six months is now largely wasted. But anyway, as I mentioned, um, taking a look at the budget, we did get a nice bump of $26 million from um, the Castellinis for next season, so that will definitely help us as we get ready for the offseason. Uh, new goals don't suck completely. Improve stolen bases acquire an all-star, increase attendance, total balance, reach the playoffs within the next four years. Uh, definitely think that's not unreasonable to try to uh, achieve some of those goals. But right now, um, we've got a huge hole in our front office. Fortunately, with the changes that I made at the beginning of this playthrough six months ago in game time, we don't have any other openings to fill. Uh, but we need to find a scouting director very soon, and we need to find a really good scouting director very soon. Um, looking, assuming that we want someone who's highly favored tools Looks like um, Michael Hill, whose really goal is to, whose goal is really to be a general manager, is probably our best choice that's out there. Excellent at amateurs, scouting international and scouting minors, good at scouting the majors. Uh, I think he's probably the way to go. The other option that I would do just to enrage everyone who thinks that you can only bring on a highly favored tools scout is to go with uh, Scott Emmons here who favors tools and is excellent in all the categories, but I don't feel like uh, provoking and triggering people on that front today. Uh, Michael Hill, hopefully at 52 years old, is not a uh, guy who's gonna retire immediately. Uh, so I'm gonna try to see if we can bring him on as our scouting director. 
looking for 1.175 million. Hopefully we can get them for a million a year, a little less than that for the next five years. We will get the offer out to Michael Hill and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll find out that he's joining us in the not so distant future. Um, and I'm actually going to up our scouting and our development budgets a bit right now. Don't know where we're going to end up when all is said and done, but would like there to potentially be a little bit of extra money compared to last season in both of those budgets. Um, we've also got the opportunity based on our performance, it looks like, to put up to $5.75 million in international uh, amateur free agent budget. So very happy to do that. We'll know more about our draft budget um, after the uh, lottery is held for the draft, so that's something we may change. But even with those changes, we still have got close to $60 million to spend uh, the big concern for us is going to be to um, get a scout on board so we can start uh, repeating this process of making sure that all of the potential free agents are all scouted well. Um, really frustrating that we basically got to start over at, uh, I don't want to say square one, but um, we're starting over with average and low scouting accuracy all around the league at this point and even on our own team after we just basically spent the last six months scouting heavily to um, prepare ourselves for this off season and to be as uh, effective as possible. But enough complaining about that. We'll take a look at our owner goals. Um, Certainly after a 77-win team, um, not sucking completely this next year seems realistic. Uh, improving team steals, uh, I don't see that being hugely important in baseball in 2023, heading into 2024. But all we need to do is bring one fast guy on the team, and we're probably okay on that front. And then other than that, we've got acquiring an all-star by a few years, increasing attendance by a couple years from now, increasing profit and long term. So for next year, it's just not sucking completely, which I think we can do. And we do have the opportunity to negotiate that stolen base goal. Another option is to improve our fan interest over three years. I would much rather do that. So we're going to switch goals there. Um, so now we really only have one goal for next year, which is just not to stink. Um, so I think we will definitely not suck completely. And now we've got a few longer term goals. I'd want to improve our fan interest anyways. Um, we're at 74, so we did make good progress on that last season. But uh, would like to get it, you know, hopefully up into the 90s by uh, 2026, which I think is not an unreasonable goal from Mr. Castellini at all. And we've got a lot of decisions to make as this offseason begins. Uh, you can see I've made an offer to a fair amount of the relatively small list of minor league free agents we have this year. Blackman and McCutcheon, who we both um, brought on at the All-Star break, um, between the All-Star break and the trade deadline to give us a little bit of fan interest boost. Our 37-year-old outfielder is not going to bring either of them back. Uh, Casale has opted out. Uh, would have loved to have him around at $2.5 million next year. He's only looking for a little over four, um, so certainly would consider bringing him back. Uh, Luke Weaver, the reliever, had a pretty rough year for us. 684 ERA over 97 and a third innings pitched. Does have a good personality. Um, I don't know that he's worth $2 million a year here in his early 30s as a guy who's probably a below average major league pitcher, though. So I don't think we have to do much with either of them at this point. We are going to spin through this list of... Uh, Arbitration eligible players, as I've talked about, uh, Tyler Stevenson, Kevin Newman, uh, both kind of getting up there in money along with Jonathan India. All of them going to be in the 4 to $5 million range most likely. But um, since I don't have really good scouting, just going to kind of go with how the guys performed and uh, what I thought their abilities were like uh, a few weeks ago, the last time I looked at them when I actually did have a scouting report. 
So after reviewing the option eligible players, we're going to make offers to Stevenson, India, Newman, obviously, Karoloff, obviously. Jake Fraley was a little more marginal. Uh, he still has one option year left, so we are going to try to bring him back. Um, Fairchild, another um, center fielder, uh, is out of options, so we probably will not be bringing him back. Uh, Pitching-wise, Anderson and Schmidt are both guys who should end up in our rotation, um, so we've made offers to them. TJ Antone um, has been injury-plagued, and Lucas Sims has just not been very effective at the major league level. They're also both going to be 30 years old um, by May of next year. Um, so I don't think we're going to make offers to either of them. Um, we'll see if we can pick up anything for either of them in trade. Uh, if not, we're just going to switch those offers to nothing and uh, hopefully use some of the funds that we are going to have available to bring on some talent to help our pitching staff because that's the area that we definitely need to improve the most. And as we get ready to run through arbitration over the next few weeks, um, also got to start preparing for free agency. Uh, as I've talked about, stinks that we don't have a good scouting report on any of these players that are going to be out there at this point. But thinking about our pitching staff first, uh, if we could add a big-time starter, a really good left-handed reliever, and a closer... Uh, those would be three big additions. Take a look at the starting pitchers that are available. Uh, Aaron Nola would take up a huge chunk of our money, but he would likely be a nice addition. Uh, would certainly be a frontline starter for us. Uh, Alex Wood, maybe. Um, 9 and 11 with a 286 ERA and almost a strikeout per inning this past year. Uh, certainly when we have a scout on board, would love to uh, scout those players. It looks like we're allowed to scout them now. Uh, no, we can click on like we're pretending to scout them, but since we don't have a scout, obviously we can't. I thought that was a little odd there. Um, so there's options, not necessarily an abundance of options, but there are options uh, in the starting market. Taking a look at closers. Josh Hader would be a lot of money. Liam Hendricks might be a decent option. And obviously we could certainly have someone close for us who doesn't uh, have that title. Andrew Chafin could be a decent lefty, but almost $10 million. Don't see that happening. Don't see us spending $12.6 million on Sean Manaya. Four million for Chapman. Don't love the personality. Um, so there's definitely not an abundance of uh, big time left handed pitchers. But again, people may look different when we have better scouting accuracy on them. With the fact that Casali has apt opted out of his contract, uh, definitely need a catcher. Uh, looks like there are a lot available, including uh, former OOTP 21 and 22 legend Austin Hedges. Uh, certainly with that defense, um, wouldn't be the worst addition with the good personality in the defense, but just not much of a bat. He's been uh, driving on the interstate for several years in a row at this point. Um, and certainly some higher-end options in Narvaez and Grandal. Um, so there are options there at catcher. And then theoretically, we could use some help at first base. But I do think that we've got enough versatility in some of our young players, namely Kelnick, uh, Encarnacion, Strand, even Steer, um, Karoloff. I think there's enough guys who are kind of corner infielders or corner outfielders who could play first base for us that I don't think we have to push too, too hard uh, to bring on someone there. So uh, we've got money to spend. Uh, I just want to have a bit better plan on how to spend it in a couple of weeks when free agency begins, certainly clearing up uh, the arbitration eligible players that we have and getting a better scouting report if we can get a scout hired in the next few days 
on the players who could be headed into free agency around the league at large would be helpful to like let us know whether we want to go after a catcher in free agency or just make an offer to Casale and try to get him signed before he hits the open market. And with our lack of scouting, we're flying a bit blind here. Um, but Stuart Fairchild, as I mentioned, is a uh, outfielder who's out of options that's on our major league roster. And then Kevin Herge, a uh, 32-year-old pitcher who had a 771 ERA last year in the majors for Tampa, spent the entire season in AAA for us with a 567 ERA. He's got a major league contract. We'd rather just get out of these two contracts. We can pick up Garrett Stubbs from the Phillies, which given that we potentially need a backup catcher is a decent option for us. He is on target to be making around a million and a half dollars this coming season, but he does also still have one option year left. So he at least gives us a fallback option if we don't end up signing Casale and then don't end up upgrading um, at catcher in the offseason. He can be our backup. And if we do end up upgrading, uh, we can still put him in AAA for a year. So I think we're going to go ahead and try to make that trade. Um, go ahead and submit that offer. And somehow, uh, even though we haven't made any trades, our trading reputation has uh, gone back down to just being average since the uh, trade deadline when I think we were definitely above. So it does seem like that decays reasonably off. And I kind of thought that... Uh, your reputation would uh, be a little more persistent. Um, but we'll go submit that offer and see if we can start cleaning up our uh, roster a little bit as we get closer to the beginning of free agency. And I mentioned that we were also likely to not offer TJ Antone and Lucas Sims arbitration offers. Looks like we can get Dalton... Guthrie from the Mets organization. He's on a minor league contract right now, um, so we would have to renew that, which hopefully we can do. He does have three option years left. Um, pretty versatile player, um, pretty good in the clubhouse, has a little bit of speed. Don't know that he really has a major league bat, but um, would at least be an inexpensive person to have in our organization, get another couple guys, get at least something back for those guys. I did think about Zach Eflin from the Rays, but he's making um, $11 million next year and then 18 the year after that. And um, coming off a year when he was 7-11 and 11 with a 376 ERA, but he's going to be 30 by the start of the season. Uh, admittedly, with only average scouting accuracy, we think his stuff and his movement are below average. Just seems like we may be able to find a more cost-effective solution than that. So we'll go try to package these two guys for Guthrie and see uh, what the Mets have to say on that front. And the reliever that we picked up in a trade last year, uh, actually he was acquired in a minor league free agent signing. I actually didn't pick him up. It was right before we took the team over. Um, I was claiming credit for him, and I shouldn't. But uh, Ian G. Bo, um, out of options, um, so we're shopping him as well. And we can get Ryan Mountcastle from the Red Sox. Coming off of a torn meniscus um, doesn't bring anything to the table defensively. But in the early stages of his career, he's been an above-average player in terms of his OPS plus and his WRC plus. Um, has hit with some pretty interesting power in the past in Baltimore, less so in 2023, but it was also a relatively small sample size due to the injury um, with Baltimore and Boston. But if we could pick him up for not much more than Jibo, I think that would be a... Uh, pretty interesting add to our team as well. Yeah, our assistant GM says a definite yes, so I'm not sure what uh, exactly else the Red Sox might want to come back with us um, for on him. Maybe because of that, to avoid it maybe being a big-time player, might try to add in somebody else to the contract to give it a little more value before I submit it. 
And we'll throw in Jason Vossler as well, a uh, 30-year-old who was up on our team this year. He's going to be marginal to make the roster, and certainly if we bring in Mount Castle, um, who's also kind of a first baseman corner outfielder, his chances would be much less. I don't think, I mean, it said the Red Sox would be interested in this trade. I can't see why they would be, uh, but I'm still certainly going to submit it and find out. And the good news is that uh, all three trades are close to being done, and they really don't need big-time players to get them done. So I think I'm going to do these. Um, we're going to pick up Stubbs to potentially be a backup catcher, get a couple of guys off of our 40-man roster to free up a little bit of money. Uh, we'll throw Ricardo Quintana into that deal and complete that trade. Uh, taking a look at the other two. Uh, trade with the Mets. Um, we'll get the second baseman, the minor leaguer, Guthrie, in return for the couple players that we weren't going to sign. Uh, we can add in 26-year-old minor leaguer, Frangier Arugarian. Ar Arangarin. Add him in, get that trade done. And then last, but certainly not least, uh, the opportunity to pick up um, Mountcastle from the Red Sox, which I think could be really interesting for us. 24-year-old uh, first baseman, Jack Rogers. Um, it doesn't look like he's ever going to be a big-time player, so we'll add... Jack Rogers in there and get that traded completed as well. Ooh, and the fans happy that Mountcastle is on board. So um, definitely cleared up a little bit of more money for us, which is always positive and feel like we've probably made the team better along the way as well. And Stubbs and uh, Mountcastle will both go right on to the active roster for us. Hopefully Mountcastle will be ready for... Uh, the start of the regular season, so that means um, uh, we've got to make arbitration offers to both of those players, which we don't want to forget. And then also we do have, or we should have, the young guy that we picked up from the Mets, but I don't see him here. Where? Oh, well, first... We'll get offers out to all of these guys, and then we'll track down the minor league infielder as well. And the uh, minor league infielder was Dalton Guthrie, uh, so we will go ahead and offer him a minor league extension. Hopefully he'll be willing to stick with us in the organization and give us a little more depth um, without having to commit to a major league contract to him. So through those moves, I think we've made the roster a little better on the margin, gotten rid of some players who um, were on major league contracts that we didn't necessarily want and or were out of minor league options. And uh, we've actually even boosted our fan interest just a tiny bit thanks to bringing Mount Castle on board. So it's been a very productive first day of the off season. Obviously, the hope now is to get all of these arbitration eligible players now signed and uh, get a scout hired ASAP so we can start scouting ahead of free agency. And Michael Hill uh, does say he likes our contract. Uh, hopefully we can get him on board very shortly. And we're starting to sign some of the players. Clark Schmidt will be back, uh, bringing back some minor leaguers. Newman back at catcher. Indian Stevenson back. Uh, the fans are excited by Stevenson signing his deal in arbitration. Karoloff, the fans are happy with that as well. Looks like we may be losing a coach here, though. Uh, Craig Driver, um, who... We hired as our bench coach when we took over. Um, looks like he's got an opportunity to be the manager of the Houston Astros. Um, so he's looking for a promotion. Obviously, the only real promotion we can potentially give him is to uh, 
let him take over as our manager for David Bell. So I'm certainly going to look into that. Uh, I don't necessarily want to lose a million dollars for the next three years on Bell, but if I think driver's better, I'd rather just move on right now from David Bell and get my own guy in there. And I think we'll let uh, Diver depart, um, or Driver depart. Um, we brought on a lot of good talent across our minor leagues. There's probably someone in the minors who we could promote to bench coach. Uh, if not, we are at the very early stages of the off season, so there's probably some good options out there. So if we have to move on from Driver, we will. Bell is good at development, good at mechanics, good at aging. He lets us basically control just about everything, and he's also got good relationships with the team. So I don't think there's any real burning reason to um, flush $3 million down the drain to uh, promote driver at this point. And some more good news. Stubbs, the minor leaguer, Guthrie, and Mount Castle have all signed. Fans are happy that Mount Castle will be with us, um, and we do have a scouting director now. So we actually uh, briefly have a full regiment of our personnel at this point, but likely to be losing driver soon. Um, Michael Hill, I didn't even take a look at his um, relationships. Uh, he was the best scout out there, and the scouts are normally on the road. Um, but it actually turns out that he gets along well with the uh, other personable folks in the organization. Uh, so that's positive as well. Um, still don't really have any brewing conflicts at all. The only thing we can't do is we uh, can't hire someone who's controlling because that will be very disruptive with everyone else who struggles with that type of personality on our coaching staff. And now that we do have a scout back on staff, we're just going to start trying to scout like crazy. The top handful of potential free agents hopefully get better information on them. It's November 6th right now. Uh, free agency begins on the 24th. So we've got close to three weeks. So we should actually be able to have pretty decent scouting reports on the uh, top segment of potential free agents by the time we do get to free agency, which will be... Uh, small step in the right direction of rebuilding the scouting intelligence of the Cincinnati Reds organization. And Craig Driver has used the one year we hired him for as the uh, bench coach with the Reds as a springboard to go to the Astros to become their manager, so we do have an opening now. Uh, still got about two weeks till the start of free agency. Uh, haven't been any big awards for the Reds so far, but we're in the early stages of the uh, award season. But uh, no gold gloves, not a surprise given the uh, poor rankings we had as a team defensively last year. And Kirk Casale's demand has come down a bit as we get close to the start of free agency. I don't even know if there's enough time for us to lock him up, but I think he would be a better backup catcher than Stubbs. Uh, that personality in the locker room is pretty important. We had him at 2.5, which he opted out from, but now he says he'll do it for $3.8 million. We'll try him for a little less than that. Obviously, we want to save some money. And we'll give ourselves a potential team option at the same amount. I don't know whether he'll go for this or not. We will give him a bonus if he gets 480 at-bats. If he's our everyday catcher for some reason, yeah, we'll give you a bonus, Kurt. Um, we'll see what he thinks of that. He's willing to think about it. And unfortunately for us, there wasn't enough time to uh, get Casale signed um, before he hit free agency, so he is out there now. You can see we made a little bit of progress um, on the pitchers. We started scouting the batters a little more aggressively, so we're in a better position um, with our thoughts on the potential batters as far as scouting reports as free agency begins. Uh, Casale supposedly looking for $3.6 million now. Yeah, still in the same range that he was before. So um, 
we can talk to him, but he's now on the open market, so we'll talk to everyone else who's on the open market. Um, also have some international free agents to uh, take a look at, and it seems like there might be some uh, interesting ones to think about. Taking a look at the international free agents, uh, a lot of catchers. And again, our scouting reports aren't great, but certainly Suichi Shimuzu out of Japan. Looks like an excellent defensive catcher with a ton of home run power. Looking for big bucks, um, but he could be an interesting guy to add. And then center fielder Hisping Su out of Taiwan. Looks like a pretty interesting player also, and only looking for about three and a half million. A 28-year-old who's durable, respectable defensively, has some speed. Um, definitely looks like he could have some uh, extra base type power. His contact isn't optimal, uh, but certainly Su we will get a scouting report on. Um, we don't want to look at his scouting report. We want to request a scouting report. And the same thing with Shimuzu. We'll request a scouting report on him as well. So we are going to have some interesting decisions to make in free agency. Hopefully in a couple of days we'll be in a better position as far as the pitchers. Um, you can see we've got a few uh, everyday players who are free agents left and then a bunch of pitchers on the list who we should know more about within the next week or so so probably not going to be too much free agent activity till we've got better scouting reports on all of those players uh, fan interest stands at a 79 after we've gone through the arbitration process getting some of those players re-signed and we've got over 60 million available even with the modest increases that we've already put into our scouting and development budgets so we are in a very interesting spot right now feel like uh, we've got the opportunity if we spend this money well to um, get this team from the 77 and 85 team win team that we were a year ago to maybe something more where we can flip that record around at 85 and 77 and uh, with a record like that definitely should be in contention for a wild card so with the amount of money that we have to spend the talent we already have on our team uh, I don't think that competing for a wild card next year is unrealistic at all so that's definitely going to be our goal with these reds and we will find out uh, how we start to build that team that we hope will be in the race for a wild card in our next episode until then thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day